Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Project IMG Interviews. Our today's guest is the lovely Dr. Luna Tello, incoming PGY1 Pathology. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Luna. We're so glad to have you on Project IMG Interviews. I'm sure your inspiring journey will uh, further inspire and motivate a lot of other pathology uh, aspirants. Um, so welcome, Dr. Luna. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited, um, you know, to be here on this platform and, you know, help IMGs because I'm an IMG myself. So yeah. it's it's a very personal, uh, it's a very personal thing for me to be able to help someone who was once in my shoes. Thank you so much. So all your sweat and hard work has finally paid off. How do you feel first and foremost? It's um it's really great i'm not gonna lie i mean it's awesome yeah and overwhelming at the same time you know the move is not very easy um so you know it's been really great and everything's just happening so fast like time really does fly so you get to enjoy like a weekend after you match and stuff and then you have mm -hmm. to start doing your paperwork and but yeah. it's all really exciting so it's it's just an incredible feeling Yes, it's it's a bonus time before your residency starts. So I think I'm mm -hmm. sure you're enjoying it. Uh, Dr. Luna, before we get into the details of your journey, what was your biggest motivational factor to just keep you going through the journey? Because it's a tiresome, grueling journey. So what was your biggest driving factor? I think um, my motivation is that I don't know. I mean, I guess I had some role models around me. I was influenced by some family members who were able to do it, even though their circumstances were also difficult. So, you know, just understanding that other people have difficulties as well. I help, it helps you push and, you know, you got to love what you do. So I love what I do. And I kind of felt like it's really worth everything. Some days it's more tiring than other Sundays you might think. But, you know, I really had nothing else in mind. So I guess I have, that was the only thing to keep me motivated. That's amazing. It's always, it always helps to know that you're not alone who just went exactly. through those things. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, why don't we start with how your journey started, your USMLE timeline, and just feel free to go around uh, that zone and just... Okay, so I kind of knew I wanted medicine a long time ago. Um, you know, I was influenced because a lot of my family, they're in the medical community. So that was just something I felt, not that I was born into, but I really liked the hospital environment. And I just always felt like it was home. It was nice collaborative atmosphere. You know, people are nice to each other. You treat people with compassion. So I wanted to do, you know, something noble with my life. And I, want, I feel like medicine is definitely a noble job to have. Um, it's a very human, there's a human side to it. So that's what really drew me in. And I just loved it. So I started with my undergrad, undergrad um, at the American University of Beirut. And we do like an American system there. So it was, I did three years over there. I graduated, I got a bachelor degree in science. I studied biology. And then for medical school, I did four years. Um, and that was at University of Balamand, also in Lebanon. And, you know, while I was in med school, we weren't really forced to do it like by second year of med school. Right. So I really wanted to take my time. I was very aware that I didn't want to take the steps until I was fully prepared. Right. So I gave myself some time after the first couple of years during the third year, I was soaking up, you know, the clinical side of medicine and just really understanding what diseases yeah. are, putting a name to the face of every disease. And in my fourth year of medical school, I started studying for my step one. I, it took me around six months, seven months to prepare for it. Three was like, you know, lighter. And then three was like dedicated uh, study time. And then I did my step two after I graduated med school. This was while I was doing my research year. Right. And uh, yeah, so that was my timeline. Right. So like IMGs, we tend to start late, right? Unlike mm -hmm. the U.S. Uh, medical uh, graduates. So, uh, Dr. Luda, uh, how did you grow up to like pathology? Like, it's not, uh, it's 
pretty rare to find someone. I mean, we can say IM Peds is, of course, uh, they're more popular uh, post-graduation branches as opposed to pathology. But pathology is also known to be very IMG friendly, but it takes passion and interest to kind of like pathology. And it's a diagnostic field as well. So, I mean, what draws you to pathology? Is it its diagnostic nature? Is it its less like semi-clinical nature? What is it that you like about pathology? I mean, when I was like picking my field, I definitely pathology was not my number one choice mostly because we're not really exposed to it that much. Right. Um, as medical students, you're not exposed to it. I mean, if you are, it's because you really want it. So you have to choose it as an elective, at least where, where I went to medical school, it was kind of like that. Right. Um, but when I was really thinking about my specialty, I just wanted, to be honest, just to think about, you know, what, what do I want to do for the next like 40 years, you know? And, you know, your job a little bit kind of becomes your life. So, you know, you really have to zone in on that. So I made sure I did my research. Um, I got in contact with a few pathologists that, um, that I knew about, and I just wanted to see if they're happy. You know, that was very important to me that these people are happy. Yeah. And I did not find one unhappy pathologist. I'm like, this is a nice, you know, it's, it's, it has like a nice uh, kind of lifestyle because yeah. you don't really see that. But, you know, you do miss the human side of things. That's why it may not be very popular. And I, I do like the human side of medicine. So that's kind of like a downfall. But um, pathology I found was really interesting because it's a really, I feel like it's one of the fields in medicine that's really developing quickly. Right. You have, you know, machine learning, you have AI, you have digital yeah. pathology. This, this is the kind of thing that kind of drew me to pathology and I just feel like it's really exciting to be in that field and just, I'm a curious person. I like to know, you know, where this disease comes from. And I like to look at pictures. I like to look at art. So it's, it's just really when you understand yourself and what you like and incorporate that into like what kind of specialty you want to do. So I, it really took me time to kind of decide on it. But now that I did, I'm really happy with my choice. So I urge everyone to look into pathology. It's a lovely field. And it is, like you said, super ING friendly. Yeah. Um, it's an intellectual field. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of teaching. There's lots, you know, like I like to teach as well. So it has a little bit of everything. So I find it to be yeah. just a beautiful field. And also great work-life balance. I think less mm -hmm. physician burnout rates and lesser you know, um, happier doctors. I mean, I, that's all I can yeah. say. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that is important, you know. It's that is, important that is very important. Yeah. It's very important, yeah. So I think it's one of the exciting fields to be in uh, now because it's, I feel like we're at a time where it's, we're shifting pathology is no longer just a microscope in a lab. You get to work with really cool gadgets, um, especially after the pandemic, you know, people realize how important lab testing is on mass. So this, this, this thing got me a little bit more into it, definitely. Especially as you mentioned correctly, AI, machine learning is revolutionizing the way um, pathology uh, is, right? So that's a, that's a very exciting, um, you can say, potential uh, uh, development in pathology that every, I mean, every aspiring pathologist should just look up uh, this new avenue of mm -hmm. You, you really need to look for pathology to find it, you know, you need to look for this field. But if you do, you're going to, you're going to love it. I think it's, it's maybe it's not for everyone, but everyone who's been to pathology has, has had a good time. Right. That's great. That's great. You are in it for the right re reasons. And uh, it, it just, it's wonderful how you talk about it. It just, it gives a great energy. So I, I think all of, all of us should have that kind of passion for whichever speciality that we're choosing. When you talk about it, your eyes should sparkle and I could just see that. Thank you. So Dr. Luna, um, what, like as IMGs, it's a, not only IMGs rather, the USMLE journey is a long one. It's a marathon almost. Each exam, every milestone you cross, it kind of, I mean, it's a long journey, US clinical experience, research, all of these things. 
and everyone's bound to face difficulties. Uh, so what were some of the difficulties that you faced? And I would like you to add, what were some of the difficulties that you faced because of COVID pandemic as well? Because, because of the pandemic, visas weren't issued, the US clinical experience was not easily available and whatnot, right? The world was closed. So what were your personal difficulties? What were the difficulties that you faced because of the pandemic? And how did you overcome it? So thank you for asking that question. I'm, I'm excited to answer it because, you know, I when I was in medical school, I'm originally Syrian. So, yeah. you know, we had uh, a ban come up, so I couldn't come do my electives here, although I did find some electives uh, through my university. They helped me. But, you know, I applied for visas. They got rejected. So I had to kind of because of that, I had to, you know, change my electives and because of that I couldn't get the electives I wanted on time and yeah. that was that was stressful in itself but I didn't let it stop me because you know when you're in like in your med years you'd think that this is the most important thing in the world but I didn't get that chance and I just you know I think you should take any situation and turn it and make it work for you so in that case I was like okay since I'm not coming to the U.S. I have more time to study for my step one Right. So I extended the period of my step one and I, you know, made sure I studied really hard and took advantage of that time. And after I graduated medical school, I did I still have the visa issue. So I couldn't do step two CS. And then the pandemic hit and then I couldn't, you know, they canceled step two CS and I was stuck in Saudi. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to fulfill that requirement, I had to get a license in Saudi. And that was so difficult because I was applying for the match, actually, not this year, last year. I applied for the match. I did my interviews. And right before ranking time, I needed to get certified and I couldn't get these things done on time because of COVID. So eventually I, would, I had to withdraw from the match. And that, that really, really, really was a difficult time. But the way I turned it around is I was like, okay, you know, I worked on getting my license as soon as possible. I got UCFMG certified. I took some extra time. I did a virtual observerships in pathology because I felt like I was lacking that before and I couldn't come to the US. So I, did, I found a virtual observership. That was not easy to find, but you know, um, yeah. I think platforms like with you guys, it, it definitely helps. Um, just to show you know that you're still engaged you're trying um, your best. Yeah. You're trying your best. I stayed in contact uh, with everyone I interviewed with, you know, just explaining my situation. You know, I kept them in the loop. I did my step three. Um, and yeah, that's what I did. So, you know, I just showed them that like, I really did try mm -hmm. and I'm still engaged in the community. Um, I'm still interested in the program and I still really want to do this. So it takes a little bit more investment on your end, that's for sure. But when you show that you're persistent, I think, right. you know, it did work out in my favor. So I'm happy, very happy with the result. Yeah, you made the best of what you have. And yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, with IMGs, moving, moving around is an issue. Visas and tests that you have to take overseas and cost and everything. I definitely understand. So, you know, I, I've been through it all. So any questions anyone might have, they can just, you know, anything you would think anyone else would be interested in, you should just ask me a little bit more about. Sure, I'm sure you'll get a lot of, lot of questions. Pathology is, I mean, people, as you said, people should explore pathology, spend a day uh, in pathology lab with pathologists around to see if they enjoy it. And, and ask Dr. Luna if you're passionate about pathology as yeah, she is. Um, so, I mean, you literally faced an unexpected delay because of unforeseen events and you still went on. You, as stuff got going, you know, you kind of just matched up to it and did whatever you could. That is, I think that's the spirit of IMGs as whole. Like we just have to, we have it harder than U.S. Uh, medical school graduates, but persistence is what what makes us stand out. Like you work on the aspects that you can control rather than whine about the ones that you can't. 
And your journey is a great example. I did not know. I mean, I tried to go through your answers and your profile, but I did not know that you had a delay as well. And that's that's super inspiring that you just kept your mental state up and just went ahead with all you had. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. I mean, it's important. I mean, it's definitely takes a village. So, I mean, it's not all just my personal yes. uh, perseverance. You it know, does some, take a village. So um, rightly so. I you know, I would not be here without the support of my, you know, my colleagues, some of my colleagues, friends of mine, you know, my family yeah. just was amazing throughout this whole process. So yes. having a strong community around you is definitely, definitely helpful. You know, even re when you're in a situation, reach out to people within your network and, you know, yeah. always ask, always ask, ask, ask yeah. a question. Awesome. Do not worry about being annoying. You tell people, this is my situation. What should I do? And, you know, it was because of someone in my network, you know, was like, okay, he's aware of my situation. Right. He helped me find, for example, a virtual um, observership, you know, just to kind of, you know, add something to, you know, to my experience. So always like platforms like Project IMG, I think are perfect for this kind of stuff. So that's why I'm here. I want to help. Do it back. Definitely. And more than like more often, often than not, people are super nice, even randomly. If you contact people who've matched, who are just probably residents, I've, I've seen some really good people, like really helpful and kind people out there in our community, because everyone knows how hard it is. Right. And um, there are some genuine nice people around in our community to help. And definitely. I agree with you 100%. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Luna, like you, uh, ha like if you're, if you don't, if you're comfortable with it, um, how many programs did you apply to and how many interviews did you manage to get? And I'd like you to follow that up with, um, what were the top three things that made your CV stand out to program directors? Um, so I applied very broadly. I applied anywhere that accepts a visa, to be very honest, because yeah. I was open to live anywhere and work anywhere. And I think IMGs could relate to that. I must say there are not that many programs in pathology. There are a total, I think, of 165 and 134 offer visas. So for me, I feel like I didn't, like, I think with internal medicine, it's like thousands of programs, if, if I'm not mistaken. But in, because in pathology, there were like a fewer programs, I felt like it was an opportunity for me to apply broadly. So I applied to 134 pro programs. You don't have to apply to 134 programs. Some of them I just applied to and, you know, um, but I got, the, I got 11 interviews uh, for matching. And then I eventually matched, I ranked 10. Okay. And... What were the top three things that you feel made your CV stand out? I don't really know. I wish I knew. Um, okay. like program directors don't really tell you. No. They don't really tell you why they selected you for interview. But I will say for my case, I, I really made it a point to showcase my love for pathology. I want to show the people that I want to show the program that I want this specialty. You know, I'm not just choosing it for whatever reason. I made sure that I conveyed all my passion in my personal statement while also talking about my goals. And, you know, that's basically what I did. So I just, I did some research in pathology. I mentioned my observership. I even mentioned a little bit of my struggle, but just towards the end, I didn't want to make it a struggle essay. I wanted it to be very positive mm -hmm. and very, you know, I just wanted to convey my positivity through that. I'm hoping that that's what made them like me. I don't know. I, I know um, what I know what they liked, and I, I can I can attest to the kind of positive positivity and passion I think they saw in you uh, talking about pathology. I think we all could see the way you talked about pathology. I, I'm I'm sure your CV showed that, but the way you talk about it definitely shows that. So so that's one. I think I think your grades are pretty important too. Yeah. I, 
I've had my grades maybe mentioned to me like twice, but other than that, people just care about your research is important. Um, I'm not going to say that it's the end of the world. If you, it is becoming more and more important. That is for yeah, sure. Because of pass and fail step one. I mean, because of, yeah, even before that, you know, you just need to show your involvement in the field in a way. So let's say I was not published by the time I was, um, okay. by the time I was interviewing, but you just put it on your CV and they will ask you about it. And when they ask you about it, just be prepared to, you know, prepare that um, so that you, when you talk about it, you're not really remembering details. You're just engaging in a conversation and make it, you know, like you're just two colleagues discussing yeah. something in your field so that they know that you're interested. Yes. So maybe research came up quite a bit, especially with university programs, as I mentioned before. University programs will look at the more academic side of things, I think. And then with more hospital programs, they just want to know a little bit more, I think, about your work experience. Yes. Um, have you done this before? You know, so that they feel like maybe you can work a little bit more because it's less academic and more work oriented. Yes. I think, um, but I, I, I wish I could, I wish I could uh, say, I would say maybe research came up a lot, research, I think. And, you know, anything you, that you do, even in your hobbies, your hobbies are really important. Like this showcases who you are outside of who you are in medicine. Mm -hmm. um, if you yeah. any volunteer work, anything you're passionate about, even if there's a sport you like, I saw some residents, um, some people who match their, their hobbies were really cool, like DIY, you know, it could be anything. So um, I played tennis in medical school. So they asked me a lot about my tennis. Uh, yeah. So your hobbies as well. I think they'll focus on your hobbies too. Yeah. So that's three. They want all rounded resident physicians. They don't want numbers and grades and just publications. I, I think they want to see you as Grades certainly help. I mean, I guess you know, behind that number was so much. And for IMGs, for us, there's a feel like a lot more pressure on us to, to do well on these tests because it definitely opens the door. Once that door is open, make sure that you have a little bit more to you than your grades mm -hmm. is my advice. That's, that's amazing. That's an amazing advice. That's an amazing like tagline as well. So um, pathology is a lot research driven field as such and um do you think now with pass field step one research will be indispensable for fields like pathology especially because it's a very it's a niche uh research driven field so i mean what what's your take on that what would you advise for upcoming pathology uh match aspirants i I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, when I was applying to pathology, step one had not been passed or failed right. yet. Mm -hmm. I think that that definitely affects things. I didn't really think that far about it. I think research, whether step one was pass fail or not, was certainly becoming more important. More important. Independently. It's, it's always um, a plus to have something under the belt in research. Yes, definitely. I think with anything you do, because I think... Now that everyone is doing these things, and especially as IMGs, when you have a year or two delay, yeah. it's something to be able, you know, you want to use your time wisely, right? So you can you can be working post-grad, let's say if you got like pathology training, that's awesome. If you get research, it's also pretty great. Um, my advice on that, whether it was pass or fail, I don't know if that changes anything, but I do feel like research is important. And will continue to be more and more relevant. Um, if you want to join one of those big programs and stuff, you're expected to publish, present, go to annual conferences. So that's that's a skill that they kind of want you to do on your own. If you know yeah, what I mean. Pathology is a competitive branch, as you as as you mentioned. One like there are the ratio of pro, number of programs uh, compared to say I am or pediatrics, it's way lesser. So it's competitive. So it just as you told, you had some research interest and work, and that kind of helped you have conversation during interviews. So definitely, by the sound it of definitely, it. 
And you'll always find someone doing something. You don't know how, you don't know where. Path Twitter is awesome. Um, you can just go on Twitter. There's a huge pathology community. I'm a part of it a little bit. Um, I just joined it. But, you know, we're, I'm always trying to share as much as I can with when, when it comes to opportunities or pages like Project IMG. We can just promote these opportunities. Get in touch with someone on Twitter. You will find someone that's doing something you want to do, whether it was pathology or something else. Get in touch with them. You will find a research or something to do, even if it's not, you know, you may not be published in JAMA, you know, but you can just do anything to show your interest in the field and find something you like, you know, don't just do like a type of research you're not invested in, you don't care about. So if you work with someone, I was lucky to work with um, a researcher, with a, with a pathologist who really loved pathology and who made pathology relevant to the population that we were living in. So he, his enthusiasm made me enthusiastic. And that's when I got into, into it a little bit. That's amazing. That's that's wonderful. And um, you also you also mentioned having a lot of volunteering experience. So do you think it it like IMG should volunteer if, if they can't get U.S. clinical experience for whatsoever reasons? Do you think they should volunteer in their home country or anywhere? Does that count? Absolutely. You mean volunteer research or uh, volunteer work? Volunteer work. Yes. Okay, I guess for volunteer research would be like, I think anything you can do, just do it. If you can't get a paid, I mean, it's important to get paid because we do have big expenses. Yeah. But if you can't, and, you know, I had to volunteer for a little bit myself. Uh, so uh, just do it. I, I volunteered for my research. So you can just do it. And, you know, any, any just anything to show your interest and that if you have a gap in your, timeline yeah. that you are doing something because you will be asked about this gap. Even when I matched this year, uh, when I was doing, sorry, when I was doing my interviews this year compared to last year, they're asking me, what are, what did you do? You know, and that was not a difficult question for me to answer. I was not afraid of it. First, I was expecting this and I made sure that my gaps are filled, showing my interest. You know, maybe I don't have to have a full-time pathology assistant job during that year but just to show my involvement i'm still working on my papers i'm still doing my observerships anything you can do really helps so do whatever you can just to stay in touch with the field that you like and you should be able to explain yeah. your clinical gaps is what i take from uh, your answer that's that's true definitely that's a very concise way to put it yeah so uh, before we wind up, um, what, 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 is, what is your interest uh, in pathology uh, as a super speciality? What do, what do you think uh, you will do after MD pathology? I think, I don't know. I mean, to me, if I'm just going to give you a straight up answer, I think you should go into any specialty with an open mind. You never know. I got into med school. I had no idea I was going to do pathology. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I came at it with an open mind and I was able to discover a field mm -hmm. that just, I didn't even cross my mind. So mm -hmm. I think being an open mind is nice. I do think about dermatopathology. I think it's a really cool field. Mm -hmm. um, and I did an observership in it and I really enjoyed it. Um, so that's one thing I have, but I'm, op I'm open to, to explore. So I'll share my journey with you and I'll let you know if I choose some. We're looking forward to how, how you go and what you do, definitely. And uh, if there's one last message that you'd like to give to all fellow IMGs watching this interview, what would it be? What is your one takeaway from this, from this whole journey? And a successful one. So what is your one message? My message is it's worth it. You know, mm -hmm. you're doing what you're doing for a reason. Um, if you just remember why you're doing this and, you know, there are going to be a lot of people along the way who's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So just believe in yourself and keep pushing. It gets hard for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. You are not the only one. Just keep going and it will pay off. 
That's an amazing message, Dr. Luna. Uh, we wish you all the best for whatever you do, all your future endeavors. And I hope you enjoy your time at the residency. Um, and uh, we'd love to be in touch with you. And I'm sure a lot of IMGs are going to look up to you as role model in pathology. Uh, and uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, thank you so sure much. You'll do good. I'm sure you'll do great. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, I mean, thank you for giving it back to the community. Thank you so much. And thank you. I mean, you have such an awesome platform. You're definitely giving back to the community as well. We need this huge platform to connect people. So I'm really happy to have been a part of it. So thank you as well. We were, we are so happy to have you. We're so happy to have you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great day.